Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Salary Report. It is my pleasure to welcome back someone who's joined us more than a few times before and someone that I have a great deal in common. So it's always a treat to get to speak with him. Junius, Ricardo, Stanton, and I are both from Philadelphia. You can hear it in our accents. <laughs> <laughs> Although we swear we, we don't have an accent. <laughs> <laughs> we both went, yeah, but when you say water, you can always hear it. Right, we right. both went to Penn and we both discovered at the late 90s that we have to be our own media. So we have a lot in common. Um, and I invited Junius today to talk about uh, Beyond Divide and Conquer. How do we get over? the divide and conquer that we're all feeling in our lives. And um, Junius and I have done many shows together. We'll, I'll put this layer report links in the, in the commentary. We, we started off with one many years ago called Unpacking uh, Divide and Conquer. Now we're doing Beyond Divide and Conquer. Anyway, Junius, it's always a pleasure to have you on the layer report. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for the invitation. It's good to see you. I mean, we go back, you know, it's almost, it's over 20 years. I know. I know. The, the Was the first time we met when we went to lunch in Chester? No, you took me there. We had, we had right. met. Uh, I had you on my internet radio program. That's right. That's and right. That was the first then time. Then you invited me to the Unanswered Questions right. uh, uh, meeting in Washington, D.C. Then you uh -huh. took me to Chester. And then we've been on uh, this roller coaster ride for 20 Plus you. Right. So we've been, you know, it's funny because we've both been on this search to figure out not only what's going on, but where, where can we do something? Where can we, I call it, you know, kind of turn the trim tab, which it turns the rudder and starts to make some progress. So we're, you and I are always searching. Yeah, I, I think it's a divine calling and yeah. uh, particularly in times like these where you have uh, as Orwell called it, universal deceit. So right. we're, we're engaged in trying to bring some semblance of order, truth, justice, and harmony back into play. And uh, they just keep piling the chips on the scale. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so one thing we're going to talk about, we'll get to, is transformational leadership, which is something you've been thinking about and talking about recently. So first of all, I want to start off with the types of divide and conquer, because the last time you and I talked about divide and conquer, it seems like they've invented a whole new bunch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I see that the key to them is them being the oligarchy. They right. search for any type of uh, dissatisfaction, dissent, or any opportunities that they can foment uh, disruption and divide and, and um, divisiveness. And so given what's happening, you know, that you've been documenting about the uh, economic implosion, so now it's moved into the social reengineering phase, and that's what we're seeing with some of the disruptions that we've seen in the last year or so. Right. The, uh, one of the things I wanted to mention to you, I don't know if you saw the, the pieces we published on the riots. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, one of the things I've been very adamant about, I want to hear, I just want some feedback to make sure I'm, I'm on the right trail. What I've seen is if you look at who the riots are harming versus the spin of, of, in other words, you've got this spin that says we're trying to help this person and this person and we're against all these wrongdoings. But if you look at who's really getting harmed, it's almost like this is a double down on the African-American community is what it looks like to me. Yes, yeah, and it's, it's almost like a Pied Piper type situation where you have the people who are out in front, who've been put there, who get the attention of the media. Right. And they have this fake uh, credibility in the eyes of the people because they don't know that they're being manipulated, that the Black Lives Matter, Antifa, and some of these other folks are being manipulated. And it's very similar to what we saw over 100 years ago with the Bolshevik 
uh, right. revolution. You know, so the similarities yeah. between this and the Bolsheviks is very chilling. Yeah. But I mean, as you've always said, and, and, and most people who've studied these, the, the playbook is thin. They just keep running the same play. <laughs> They're like Vince Lombardi. They keep running the same plays playbook. over and over again. Well, that's why I think I, people should go back and listen to that interview we, you did on Bernays, where you described Bernays, because so much of this flows out of Bernays. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Right. And the, the, the thing that we have to realize is that the technology is so more advanced than right. when uh, Bernays was doing it, because you only right. had radio, print media, and then... Um, in the latter part of his life, he had television. So now is the platforms are just humongous. Well, the, the way we got onto mapping what was happening with the riots was we realized it looked to us like there was a pattern of riots with Fed uh, branch or bank locations. And that's when I started to say, is somebody trying to build out the smart grid and pick up a lot of real estate around the Fed banks? And that's when I started to drill in. And right. And see, by you looking at that, notice for the first time uh, in a long time, the rioters attacked the business, the, the main center city right. business circle. Right. And for the first time, they attacked the police precinct. Right. Uh, you know, over the years, there have been limited assaults on authority of the police authority but this was almost a targeted they knew what they were doing and right. this was deliberate and like you said the land use patterns commercial uh right. the office and the fed federal buildings they're, they're all targeted right well it definitely looks to me in most places like uh and we're operating with limited information, but it looks like one of the things they're trying to do is squeeze out all the small business. Well, that's part and parcel to the COVID piece. So right. um, they, you have multi layers of the same agenda. So you have social disruption in the midst of a time where the now after that, now the businesses are locked down. And so people can't make a living they, they come up with programs supposedly to benefit small businesses, but it's siphoning, BlackRock is siphoning it off, giving the money to their buddies and their, right. their pals, and it's not filtering down to the, the entrepreneurs who need the money. Right. So what right. you're seeing is just total looting of the, of the, the system. Well, I think one of the real divide and conquers here is between the people who can print money and the people who earn money. And it's literally a war of the people who can print money on the people who can earn money. So. Yeah. And the thing about it is the, the people are printing money. Uh, they're, they're coming up with plans and ideas ostensibly to benefit the people who earn money but they're shutting down the mechanisms where people earn the money, right. meaning businesses, the, the people who work for these businesses. So if you're not connected, you're not in the game. You're not in the game. Right. You th think you are, and you're hoping that you're in the game, but really yeah. you're not. So I've always believed that the most powerful divide and conquer uh, is the men versus women. And if you could—that's the first one, right? Yeah. yeah. If you could heal that one, you could—you would get in the game and healing some of the others. And yeah, and that has—that game has been going on for a millennia. Right. And so then, when you uh, add the children, because right. remember there are certain societies that uh, practice infanticide, so right. they was, and primarily it's males against female. So you have right. the patriarchy trying to suppress the feminine spirit, not just the human female, but the feminine element, the spirit of feminism, the, the intuition, the, the divine knowledge, all that right. divine mother piece, and the, to be the original teacher. 
So you knock that out or you suppress that and it makes it easier for the people at the top to control everything. So it's really funny. The every quarter and every year we have a wrap up where we define our choice for the top 20 stories. And my number one story for 2020 in the economy section was the war on God. And the reason I chose that is if you look at a dollar bill, it says in God we trust. There's no way you can have financial liquidity unless people share a faith and a covenant that's bigger than let's make money today. In other words, hyper-materialism doesn't, you know, if, if you're gonna all be hyper-materialist and the only thing that keeps financial liquidity going is control and force. Anyway, so, so that was my number one story, but I think part of what you're talking about relates to the war on God. Because uh, did, did, by any chance, did you see Bruce Springsteen's Super Bowl ad that got spiked? No, you know what? When I watched the Super Bowl, when the halftime came, well, no, the ad, yeah, I did see the ad. Yeah, the, the, you talking about the Jeep ad? Yeah, the Jeep ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, when that one got spiked, I said, you know, I'm, I'm right about the war on God. <laughs> yeah. Well, see, the thing is, uh, and if you look at what the futurists are talking about and some of this, the things about the transhumanism, they're actually attempting to eliminate that part of us right. that is the God force. Right. And so they want to link us up with Neuralink so okay. that that eliminates intuition. And those folks who have developed clairvoyance and clairaudience that's negated, so you're absolutely right. And, 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 and the so-called injections, because that counters your immune system, which is your body's divine intelligence protecting right. you from everything else that's out here. Right. So absolutely. it's a multifaceted assault on our divinity. Right. Um, you know, I don't remember when we talked about unpacking uh, – unpacking divide and conquer. We talked about gay versus heterosexual, but I have to tell you this transgender thing has now thrown that into a level of complexity that I never, <laughs> I never even. <laughs> I mean, they've added elements to that. And I would encourage your subscribers and your listeners to look at the black, go to the Black Lives Matter website. Uh -huh. Because they tell you that's part of their program. That's not something they promote outwardly when they're in the public's eye because their agenda is bash the police. But when you go on your on their website, unless they've changed it and I haven't been up there in a couple of months, that's a critical and a crucial part of their their agenda. They're so pro I know very little agenda. about Black Lives Matter, but I've always assumed they were just basically financed by similar people who are financing the transgender movement and all these other things. When you look at, they just, in fact, they just put out a financial statement. So their 990s are out. So I think ah. Forbes or somebody else looked at it. Uh -huh. So they have a bottom line of profit for last year of like, I think it's, it's 60 million left out of 90. What? Yeah. So look into that, look into who's funding them. Like you said, it's the Ford, it's Cisco, it's, uh, I had some notes here, I don't, I don't know what I, uh, oh, Pepsi, Bank of America, uh, the Open Society Foundation, uh, Intel. So they're not grassroots, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the one that, the one that's given all of us a headache over the last four years is left versus right. Uh, well, that is, has some form of that has always been in, in play. Right. Uh, particularly in the, when the United States moved into the industrial age right. and had uh, a vigorous uh, organized labor movement. Right. So they they were deemed leftist, communist, socialist, and you had the owner class. They were the capitalists. They were 
they were right. pro capital and, and what have you. So it has trickled down to the to the the man on the street now. And so you have this ideological divide and it's really, uh, it, it has exploded. So bef- it was left, right, and it's uh, conservative, liberal. And so in the 80s, the conservatives bashed the liberals to the point that they, they don't even call themselves liberals. So now they call themselves progressives. And then you have the libertarian coming on so you're right this is it's a hodgepodge of id ideas and ideologies that uh just further confuse people i have real trouble relating to that whole discussion because if you look at how the money works you know it's like the money is being whacked up and stolen over here and these people are having a conversation and pretending that all this money is you know it's almost it's almost like a form of disassociation right well, so, I call it the emperor's new clothes. I mean, they, right. they, they, have, they convinced people to look at his robe when the kind men have stolen all the gold because right. they said they used it to, to, to make his clothing. Right. Old versus young um, is yeah. getting a little bit more vicious with what's going on yeah. now. Yeah, right. that's going to be critical. And I, and I think part of it is because older people have a different set of values. They have a slightly different lifestyle. And so younger people are more immersed in the media, the social media, the values that are implanted and embedded in the social media, and they have them. And so there are older people who say, well, um, particularly older Christians for say, I'm not going to take this, uh, digitization because it's like the mark of the beast. Well, right. the young people, they don't, they don't know that. They don't, they don't know what that means. Don't. No, they have no idea what that means. Right. Yeah. So you're absolutely right. And then you have the young people look down on the older people because we're not technically savvy and they are. And so for them, if you look at them, uh, their smartphones, their uh, tablets, all their appendages to their body. And so they're going to be easily susceptible to the notion, okay, uh, your smartphone is going to get even smaller because it's going to be this little chip and you won't even have to pull it out in your hand. It'll already be embedded in your body. And so they'll go for that. Just like they, they stand in line for the, the latest iPhone. So I think I think part of the problem with with anybody above a certain age is they have they have a lot of knowledge and experience. And so if you look at the spin, oh, I'll never forget being at a great cryptocurrency conference and the spin was, oh, well, he's old. And what you could see is the young folks had been really entrained. They were walking right into a trap. They got and they did. They got pumped and dumped. They got trapped. And, and they weren't listening to this guy, but they'd been trained to believe, oh, well, he's old, you know? And, and so it, the entrainment's very clever. Okay, obviously we have citizen it's versus. Another point. Yeah. The, the programming, remember, think about, if, if you looked at most television programming or for the most part, uh, motion pictures that depict older people, how are they depicted? I don't know, because, you know, I haven't had a TV since 1984. (laughs) Well, but I'm just saying, are they depicted as wise? Are they depicted as people who stride in navigating the world in a confident manner? Or are are they depicted as buffoons? Yeah, that's true. It's a very negative. You know, one of the most negative that I never understood, and one of my subscribers got me to read, and they got me to read one Harry Potter book and one... um, Harry Potter or watch one Harry Potter movie suddenly the parents are trying to protect you or muggles and the you know the people are trying to get you to do this and that are wizards (laughs) yeah Yeah. Yeah. and you want to get in good with the wizards and forget the muggles because they're old right right and they don't have special power right all they have is life experience and these guys are, are playing around with evil spirits and all this other kind of stuff right so you have a whole generation that that's sucked up on that. Right. So then we've got citizen versus immigrants. Uh, that's classic. 
Yeah, that's classic. Uh, now, as a as a, a financial and resource person, you know the history of uh, capitalism and the development of this country. Um, part of it wasn't even citizenship; it was nativism. So, right. in the beginning, you there were there was a, a class of people they couldn't vote. You know, if you didn't, if you weren't a white male and owned property, you couldn't vote. And so the new people came in, they were painted as threats to the uh, workforce in terms of the the nativist people. So that, that um, divide and conquer, that stratagem has been going on for hundreds of years here in this country. Right. And it gets worse. from before it was a country. Right. And it gets worse during times of economic stress. So here is the most amazing divide and conquer that's been added, and that is masks plus social distancing. (laughs) Because think about it, they've tried every other one they can think of based on our age, based on our sex, based on our religion, and it's not enough. So now we've got to come up with a divide and conquer that divides one by one, every one again, you know, from every other one, even in your family. Right. But even even on a national level. So you have the open states versus the lockdown states. So if you're, and and see here in New Jersey, you can't go into a building unless you have a mask on. So now they're telling you, you need to wear three masks. So, I mean, it's just not only they, not only are they doing this, they're just making you stupid. I mean, it's just doing stuff to you that, that they get their jollies off of making us look foolish. So before, I wanted to talk, uh, you know, this is a little bit beyond the divide and conquer, but uh, I discovered this year a writer called C.J. Hopkins. I don't know if you've read any of his articles. He's got a website called The Consent Factory. He was a very successful playwright, and then he got so mad about politics, he started to write essays. Anyway, but he has a collection of essays called The War and Populism. Basically, what he said was in 2016, the you know, the all, what you call the oligarchy got so upset about the pushback for sort of populist policies that they literally in 24 hours turned the war on terror into the war on populism. And, you know, and that's this whole wave of incredible divide and conquer that we've had ever since. Um, and, and, but he has something he calls the Covidian cult. And <laughs> the Covidian cult are people who buy it hook, line, and sinker. Right. Right. You know, so I'll give you an example. Andrew Sorkin was having a fight with Rick Santelli on whatever show they're on. And uh, Santelli was saying, you know, why should we shut down little businesses when Costco is open next door and people are packed in and, you know, there are 500 people. And Sorkin says, oh, because that's what the science says. The science says it's okay for Costco to open, but the little businesses can't be open. And that the science absolutely supports that trust science. (laughs) And Santelli is just looking at Sorkin like, man, you're in the cult. Yeah. I can't deal with you. And and part of it is, you know, if you look at the different policies like masks, Fauci will say one thing one day, then he'll say the opposite the other day, then he'll say a new thing that's contradicting to those two things the next day. And your fealty to the cult is to agree with him and, and be loyal to each no matter where Fauci changes, you know, the cult of Fauci, you're going to say, oh, well, that's science, you know. Right. And the thing is, what we're seeing is that the media follows him. And so there's never any criticism. Very rarely do they hold up his statement side by side and say, wait a minute, three weeks ago you said this, or a year ago you said this, now you're saying this. And we're seeing CDC and some other people coming out negating just about everything you've said on every level. So what's going on? So you don't, you don't have that crit- critique. I, I don't call them media anymore. Cause I don't think they are. I call them the shriek meter. I don't even call them media anymore. I used to call them corporate media, but so, so we're looking with the cult. Um, I have a very popular commentary put up that's uh it's on, it's called Mind Control Tactic Used on Young People and Children, but it's a whole series of different postings and Slayer report that we've done on entrainment technology, the one propaganda, you know, all these different things on, on both propaganda and technologically induced mind control. And, 
you know, for some reason, which I don't understand, but which I deeply appreciate, there are certain people who just don't disappear into the cult. You're one of them. And what, what, what is it? I mean, there are people who just don't disappear into the cult, you know, that seem to find a way of staying interested, staying grounded, staying coherent, and continuing to look for reality. Well, I think um, there's something you always, for me, it's, it's a search, a quest for truth. Right. And a lot of that is, is spiritually based. I'm not talking about religious dogma. I'm just talking about right. spirit world. And so if you're in tune, if you have, if you trust your intuition, and the older I get, the more I trust my intuition. And my one regret is that I didn't do it when I was younger. But all right. I have is now. So right. Right. those people who intuitively know that something's wrong, and most of us do. Most right. people do. It's just that they don't want to be ostracized. They don't want to right. be mocked. They don't want to be made fun of. Right. And right. so... Uh, my mother used to always tell me, you have to have the courage of your, of your conviction. And so there are a lot of people who know, but they don't want to step out there because they're afraid, because they're seeing, you, anytime you can de-platform the president of the United States, whether you agree with him or not, you right, know right. something's wrong. Right. And And nobody made an issue of it. Nobody in the media said, this is wrong. This is this this is counter to what we say we stand for. So people know. Look look at what it's they're doing to that guy. Look at look look at what they're doing to Mark Lindell. The, the, the my Mark pillow. The, the, the my pillow guy. What's his what's his first uh, name? Ah right. Uh, is it Mark or Charles? I I don't remember, but I know who you're talking about right. So they see that people see that. So right. oh, no, I'm not gonna. I'm not. Look at what they did. And I'm I'm just using these as as examples. I'm not pushing promoting Donald Trump one way right. or the other. Right. Look at what they did to his first legal team. They doxed right. them. They right. threatened to take away business from right. them. So right. they had to back off. Right. I I remember when I first started to litigate with the Department of Justice, they would threaten all of my attorneys with disbarment. And um, what was very interesting there was a general counsel for the HUD inspector general who would always threaten them with disbarment. And she was the one who we caught and were able to turn in an affidavit proving that she had falsified evidence and we caught her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and the, the act we had caught her in and documented was a criminal, she broke the law. It was, it was a criminal felony. And um, after she tried to sort of frame us, it failed. She then had to leave because it was sort of a disgraceful event. And she went to be the staff on the ethics committee at the DC bar, which is the committee that decides right, who gets right, disbarred. Right, right. And I just thought, you know, that was one of the things, one of the times I said, I'm they not a Washington. Reward their people. I mean, see, so right. what we're seeing is uh, one of the ways it works is if you don't go along with the program, you're ostracized or right. worse, you're sanctioned. Right. If you go along with the program on any level, whether it's at the middle level or at the bottom level, you get rewarded. Right. Well, that's why when I left Washington, I turned to my attorney and I said, we're going to have to find a way to support ourselves at retail. We can't work for governments and corporations. We have to find a way for individuals to pay us. And I'll never forget. She looked at me and she said, good luck with that, honey. <laughs> So it took, it, yeah, but that's 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 the you know the the term nowadays is public private partnerships, and they're pushing that, and so we've seen that that's been the hallmark of the ruling class for decades, right? The universe, academia, military, and the corporations. Right. And so Cortez. if you if you make a choice, it takes great courage to make that choice to say I'm not gonna I'm right. not gonna participate in that. So, so let's turn to the opportunities because the question is how we get beyond uh, divide and conquer and find our families. And I think where I'd like to start is 
with what you've been talking about and thinking about, about transformational leadership, because I think step one is you have to take responsibility and say, this is my problem and I'm going to do something about it. Right. And so take a, us away with transformational leadership. Well, transformational leadership uh, is based on tr personal transformation. Right. I mean, all you have is yourself. Right. And ideally you can form a community, which you, what you call a family, I'm calling a community. Right. So you have a transform transformative community. Right. But it's based on higher consciousness. It's based right. on empathy. It's based on ethics. It's based on morality. It's based on what old folks would just call a mother wit and common sense. <laughs> and uh, because what we're faced is this uh, Orwellian uh, double speak where they're using the language to beat us down. Right. So truth is real in their mind is false and deceit is uh the way to go and so if you're if you're about transformation you have a vision of yourself of your community or your family and ultimately the world now all you can do is to prioritize yourself right and so that becomes the major issue, and I believe once you start doing that, you will attract and be drawn to those other people that will form your family, even though they may not be biological, or your community, because right. we give off those energies it's like a tuning fork. Right. And so once we start vibrating on a certain level, we'll attract that level in consciousness. One of the things I always found phenomenally useful during the litigation was I would always pray for the other team. And that would help me understand them. And that would help me move beyond it. And that would help me attract the people who were my family. Right, right. Well, I mean, see, the thing, what, what that shows an example of is the collectiveness that right. on the life, just life is multi-vibrational yes. energy level and all that. So if you're on the higher levels, right. you're going to look at your adversary differently. Right. It's not uh, for me to win, I must smash him. That right. doesn't work. Right, but what I, where I, have enormous opportunity to improve is because of what I do, I end up looking at so much of the evil goings on and I need to find a way as I do that to stay in a higher mind or get back. You know, if I fall down into a lower mind, I need to get back into a higher mind. And so what I really work on is finding ways of helping myself get back. Um, you know, cause I, I, I can be, you know, I can be preparing the money and markets commentary. And if I'm not careful, realize I'm diving right into the sewer. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you said, see, prayer and meditation, and, and that has been given, given a bad rap, and people really don't understand what it is. It's you're not begging for anything. What you're doing is you're asking but you ask in a way or you, so that in, a, in an elevated consciousness right? So that, you know, on, all too often we beg for our plan to work right. when in fact the creator is a better plan is a better plan. There's a better plan. Yeah. You know, I, one of the things I loved about the litigation was uh, I wouldn't have the resources to, afford to go to the doctor or I wouldn't have the resources to get what I thought I needed. And so I just pray. And then the answer would come to me of something I could do for myself, something very economic that would solve my problem. And I started to realize, Oh, you know, all the intelligence in the universe is available to me. Right. <laughs> right. I just have to plug in right. Right. and maybe I need to stop running off to the, you know, the doctor or the store to solve my problems. Well, but another piece of the divide and rule is 
we've been programmed to think lack. Right. When in fact, the universe is abundant. Right. Right now, as you watch them roll out the second part of their agenda, which is this climate change stuff, hey. that's based on lack. Oh, there's not going to be enough oxygen. Oh, there's not going to be. Wait a minute. <laughs> the earth is like 70% water. You know, right. yeah, we're polluting it, but the earth is a living thing. It will respond. It has gone through multiple changes throughout its existence. And they, because we don't understand that, because we've gotten away from the feminine principle, Mother Earth. Right. Principle Earth is, you know, there's an old saying, you can't get um, uh, eggs from dead, live eggs from, live chickens from dead eggs or something like right. that. Right, right. Well, if the Earth was dead, it wouldn't have life. And it seems silly to say that, but that's the reality. And so that's their scam. Right. Yeah, if you if you look at how big the harvest is that the Earth just gives us, it's right, incredible. Right, and it's depressing. It when you when you stop and think about, um, oh yeah, agribusiness, they're actually paying people not not to farm, right? Not to harvest. So I believe what's happening is first and foremost a spiritual war, and I believe it's ten thousand plus years old. I, you know, to me we're coming into the culmination of something that's been going on for a long, long time, but it's spiritual. And yet we have a society with m many people who've been brought up as hyper materialists and they have no idea. What do you mean by spiritual war? Well, you know, what do I do? How do I understand this? What, in other words, it's almost like there's a whole parallel universe that they, you know, that's been hidden from them. Right. How, how do you help them understand this is a spiritual war and to to open up to that dimension? Well, you have to make it personal. And the, the, the playbook for me is when I call him Yeshua, uh, you know, the Christians call him Jesus. Mm -hmm. when, he, when the Luke 17, 20, when they come to him and, and they, demand the wording says they demand for him to tell them when the kingdom of God will appear. He said, well, you won't find it over there. It's not going to be over here because the kingdom of God is within you. And so right. if, until we really understand on a practical basic level, the intelligence that created and guides this universe is within every cell of our body. Right. And it can help, us in everything then that's the to me that's the essence of spirituality and well, so the other thing is it, it can also I, I believe each one of us has the power to create and develop ourselves in a way which gives us tremendous power to right. affect positive things right and I, I was looking at, uh, I was reading one of your articles and you talked about intelligence being non-local and most people don't understand what that means. Right. Um, and so we do have that power to tap into it and it's like a radio stream so that when we put our images, our, our visualization and our energy out there, it's carried along those frequencies is multiplied. And then that's when things manifest, not just in this dimension, but in, in the, the spirit dimension too. Right. Uh, but all this to people who are hyper materialistic sounds like hokey and it's voodoo and it's mumbo jumbo. No, it's not. It's real. It's just that right. we haven't been cultivated to understand it and apply it. So that's Funny, I'll, I'll never forget the first time I went to, I took a Bible class in 1998 and it was on Monday nights once a week. Mm -hmm. I had to read a chapter and then go to class. And I got there and there were about 200 people in the sanctuary at the church for the class. And on Monday nights after work, I just <laughs> thought, you know, there's no way this class is going to end up 
you know, we're, it's going to be much smaller by the time this is over. And I was wrong. It grew. And one of the reasons why a, a lot of the discussion, it was very practical. So it really got into the day-to-day -day life. There's great, great teachers. But one of the things was it constantly came back to what you could do in your life if you could grow into being a righteous person right. and the power of righteousness. You right. know, one of my favorite lines from scripture is the prayers of a righteous man Elephant. availeth much and, uh, or where two or, or more uh, are gathered in my name, there am I. But they really taught about how do you build up your own spiritual uh, understanding and intelligence and how do you become a more righteous person? Well, but that, that is the, the crux of being a person here in this dimension. You have right. to use your spiritual power to manipulate in this physical dimension. So it's very simple, uh, but it's difficult. You know, well, it's hard to do. It's a simple right, concept, right, right, but it's right, hard right, to live right, in. Right. It's, but the thing is, you have to love your idea of God because everybody has a different concept of God. Right. Uh, hopefully, it's a God of ju uh, justice, love, and mercy as opposed to a vindictiveness. And you have to love yourself and you have to love the other to the same degree and the same understanding that you love yourself. Right. And it's very difficult right? Uh, because we put so many uh, prerequisites on, do we appreciate this person? Do we love this person? Do we validate this person? But if you are working toward that life is better it doesn't mean you don't have challenges because you 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 will because you're going against the flow of the values and the lack of ethics that are predominant in this culture right but nonetheless you will actually experience joy you'll experience a sense of satisfaction a purpose and meaning in your life and that's what life is all about it's not about necessarily acquiring a lot of things so if, if if someone's listening to this junius what are the what are the tools what are the books what are the sermons what are the practices what you know what are the movies or documentaries right you know what are the sources that have helped you get stronger in your in your journey to do this one very practical one is the Course of Miracles because they have the Course of Miracles and then there's the handbook for students and there's the handbook. So if you can read that and grasp that, that will help. I I'll, think I'll tell you a very funny story. The first two lines in the Course of Miracle, um, what is it? It's, it's in the front of the book. It says, uh, uh, nothing real can be lost. Nothing unreal is real. And I swear to you, during the 11 years of litigation, that saved my life so many times because I used to say, well, I guess that wasn't real. <laughs> right. <laughs> that wasn't. And uh, one of my favorite sermons is from a preacher who says, God does not need what you have lost to bless you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, but the Course in Miracles really helped in a very practical way to, you know, to just change your mind and your way of looking at things. So I'm glad well, you mentioned that. So you just you just said the key, the key right there. If you if you when you look at even in the in the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, the Bible has been abused because mm -hmm. of dogma and all that. But when you look at it and you listen, you mentioned change your mind. Well, the essence of the gospel and particularly of the New Testament, it's in the Old Testament, but in the New, it's repent. The kingdom of God is at hand. Well, that, that word repent, metanoia. Uh, the Greek word is metanoia. Noia is mine. Meta is to change or go beyond. Right. So to do this, you're going to have to to have a different vision of yourself. You right. know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So right. we've been dumbed down. Right. We've Absolutely. Been, 
uh, forced to focus on materialism. Right. Change that. Change the way you think. Change the way you process information because we're looking at a false reality, the pseudo reality. There is more to um, living than what we've been told. My family has a, a prayer uh, meeting every every Thursday, lasts about a half an hour. We read scripture. We have a list of people to pray for, and somebody does a prayer. And so uh, a couple of weeks ago was my turn. So I shared the story about Elijah and his, his student. And they woke up and the, the enemy was all around them. And so Elijah mm -hmm. told him, pray to open his helper's eyes to see the chariots of fire, and the horses of fire that were around them. And the message is, those that are with us are greater than those that are with them. Right. And, and, and people have, that's the key to faith, that the elements, the forces, and the powers at your disposal, if you are a, are a righteous person, particularly. Now, they're right. at everybody's disposal, but right. they work abundantly if you're a righteous person. Right. So you have to... Uh, encourage people to believe that and apply it to their lives. Right. Despite open the gloom and doom, despite the fear mongering, what they're calling it, the fear porn that's out there now, despite, um, see, they went from having a jihadist around every corner and under every bed <laughs> to now to this little germ, you know, so <laughs> You know, so I mean, it's it's we the magic have virus, the right. magic virus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. Oh. So, um, so I think one of the ways that we can help each other, I have one one friend who says, you know, suddenly friends are showing up everywhere because I think there's something about what's going on. People who've been trying to stay and get along in the middle of the road are finally realizing, you know. I, I, you know, I have to, I can't stay in this call. I'm not, I'm not staying in there. And suddenly friends are showing up and I think that's good. But the other thing is, um, I also think that one of the keys to, uh, working with people collaborating is to help them manage risk in a very practical way. And to me, one of the ways I can be, more righteous is not to judge other people, but simply say, what are they trying to get? How are they trying to get through the day? What are they trying to do? What does they need? What do their family need? How can I use my knowledge to help them just do that? In other words, just be useful. Just right. try right. and be useful. Right. Right. And it's amazing uh, if you just try to be useful, no matter what's going on and no matter what they're saying, uh, it's amazing the good that can come of it. Right. And even in adverse circumstances, uh, I was a probation officer in Philadelphia for 32 years, a juvenile probation officer. So you saw it all. I saw it all. I was in a regular district for like one month, and then I was in a specialized unit all the rest of the time. The last 12 years, I was in an aftercare unit. And so the in young man- what unit? An aftercare unit. Aftercare is, uh, unit. So okay. the- you, had, you deal, dealt with the young males when they were in, incarcerated right. in placement, and then you dealt with them when they came out. And so my approach to them was, I can help you get what you want. You right. want to get out of here. If you do this, 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 and this, I will be supportive of you even getting an early release. Right. And so... That helped them. Now, the problem was they returned back to the same environment that right. spawned a lot of their behavior. Right. But their goal was still to get beyond what we call jurisdictional restraint. Right. So if you do this, 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 and this, you will be discharged, and that'll be it. I'll be out of your life. Right. And so some of them adhered to it. They saw, saw it. Some of them saw even the, the opportunity that, I put pressure on them where they could come out. It's okay. You, you have X amount of dollars. You can go to community college for free. Right. You got $3,800 for fee of money. That'll, that'll cover maybe 
a year and a half uh, at that time. And so the, some took advantage of it. Uh, so again, it's, it's helping people have a win-win. I didn't want a huge caseload, so I wanted to get, get rid of them as, as quickly as possible. <laughs> So it's like you, you help folks to have a win-win scenario. Right. So everybody gets what they need. So I also think um, part of what's happening is you can't, you can't be associated and you can't get along with everybody. So it's important to sometimes let people go. And what I see are, you know, what happened to me in the last 25 years is I had people in my family who wanted to, you know, move on a pathway that to me was immoral. And so I just decided, okay, I'm going to separate. But that's okay. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're called to separate all the time. You're called right. to join all the time. Right. You have to make a determination is this in my best interest? Does this conform with my values, my sense of ethics, my sense of integrity? If not, then maybe I can't go down. There's an Arab proverb that says, uh, it's better to, a nomadic proverb, it's better to travel alone than to go with bad company. Right. And we are, by nature, rigorous people. Human right. beings, we, we have to socialize. That's right. one of the, the downsides of this lockdown. That's why there's so much trauma and psychological distress um, going on right now because they've taken that away from us. Right. But at the same time, you want to be in an empowering and an encouraging and a positive nurturing environment. So you were one of the leaders in internet radio. And you, you got in early, you've been doing it a long time. What, what, what is it that you're finding since the COVID-19 started? What are you finding with your audiences? What are they, what are you hearing from them now? Well, a lot of them, they've, they drank the Kool-Aid. It's the Jim Jones thing. They, they, they believe either they're fearful. One of the first programs I wrote, one of the first, articles I wrote when this happened was fear not. And I told right. all the reasons not to be afraid. Right. And, but because of the mind control and the entrainment, people are afraid or they're, they're trying to get from out of this inconvenience, the lockdowns, the shutdowns, right. the losses. So it's like, okay. I'll, 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 I'll wear the mask. Just leave me alone. Uh, okay. 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 I'll take the vaccine. Just let's get back to normal. Well, guess what? Oligarch it's not going back to normal. Intention of getting back to normal. Right. That's not what this is. This is about social engineering. It's not getting right. back to normal. And so, well, also, but you've got a you've got the central bankers doing a complete financial reset, right. and that's right. that's a three to five year process at the speediest. You know, I don't know if you realize the the head of the EU last uh, year uh, last week said, "Oh, the pandemics are going to go on for a decade." I thought, whoa. Well, that's the perfect cover. That's that's why um it's gonna happen like that. It just and so not only what you're talking about, but think about now they're telling you you're gonna have to take a booster shot of the COVID vaccine injection. You know, they've lined up manufacturing. I, I have the press release up in News Trends and Stories. They've lined up enough manufacturing capability in the US alone to produce three hundred and thirty million back uh vaccines injections a month once it goes to full right well that's that's the plan when when you listen to bill gates talk about everybody he's talking about 7.8 billion, billion people. people all all hooked up to his cloud yeah yeah yeah, yeah the vaccine is the the entry level that's the portal you you go in the portal you go down the rabbit hole from then on is you know. right exactly Exactly. You know, Moderna, I have some great quotes from Moderna that I always use, but they call it the software of life. They describe it as their operating system. Right. Literally. I saw that. I saw that on when you did your um, video. But yeah. the thing is, people are not doing the research. Moderna is a 10-year-old company. They started out on cancer research. They have never brought a product to market. Right. Even 
even the ingredients for their vaccine, they're getting from some Swedish company. Yeah. I mean, it's just a total scam because they got money from taxpayer, uh, the government to, to start off. I want you to go look, because I know you said that a lot of people are drinking the Kool-Aid. Um, I want you to take a look at that family financial disclosure form, because I'm really hoping it can help families prepare for some of the, you know, one of my concerns, I've seen vaccine injury destroy families financially. Right. And so one of my goals here is to protect them from that. Um, but not everybody's in the cult. So you still, you're still finding your audience who are not, I mean, if they're coming to you, it's because they want to know the real deal. Right. But remember, we're under assault. So if they right. can, de they look at all the people that deplatforming. Right. And I found out. Have you been censored or deplatformed yet? Well, they do what's called shadow banning. Right. Where I think I'm up there. In other words, the, the blog is up there or right. I've uploaded the, um, the, the show, the podcast, but they're not suppressing it. So I just got on Spotify. So maybe uh, I'll get some wider distribution, but they, they've been uh, suppressing and censoring people right. for years. So if you ever, we have, we put up our own video server because we saw, you know, we just knew we had to get, right, right, get right. our own capacity. But if you ever want me to put stuff up for you, you know, we're happy to archive or whatever. Okay. Because um, right. we just figure, I finally got off of Twitter because after they threw Trump off, I just said, you know, I'd had a lot of problems with them before, but I just said, that's it. There's no integrity here. There's no point in being here. No. So that's, we're, gonna, that's... we're, I'm hoping next month we're, um, we got a new wrap up called Take Action. We're going to bring up an open source package that's like a, it's like a private Facebook kind of thing, but mm -hmm. it's open source. And that way the subscribers can do more sort of networking with each other and working together on different sort of tools to help each other. So. Yeah. But there, there are other platforms like that. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but people got tired of Facebook. The young kids say, Oh, my grandmother's on that. So they don't, they don't right. use Facebook, but I'm talking about, people who want another platform where they're not censored, they're not manipulated. Right. And there are some out there, um, just like there are, are alternatives to Google and YouTube. So you just have to look for them. I, I think we're going to have to do a lot more connection in the spirit. Uh, I just think the digital platforms are, are uh, you know, they're limited in what they can do because they're controlled. Right. Right. But the same thing, too, is that you're going to have to really develop discernment on that, on the spiritual level. Right. Because, as you said, this is spirit. This is consciousness. This is spirit. This is right. wickedness and evil in the highest places <laughs> that go beyond even the, the wildest sci-fi that you can think of. Well, I think, I think one of our problems is many... The general population has a hard time understanding that a percent of the population is that divorce devoid of empathy and that, you know, that, you know, cause sometimes I feel like an old church mother walking around saying, it's demonic, it's demonic. <laughs> <laughs> it's demonic. Remember the old church mothers who were just like, it's demonic. And, and Abomination. Then, oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, but, um, you're right. The, People have a hard, I tried to explain to one friend of mine and I gave him some information and he admitted, he said, it's, it's hard to believe that people are this wicked. Right. You know, they know something is wrong. Right. Uh, but they're not willing to take the red pill. Right. You know, it's so. too, it's too overwhelming. Right. Right. So, uh, Junius, tell us how we can keep up with you. You're on Spotify now. I can find you on Spotify. Uh, well, their 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 streaming their pod stream is called Anchor. So if you put my name in, Junius Ricardo Stanton. Okay. And uh, you go to a good browser, not necessarily Google, because they they're they're filtering like mad. But uh -huh. 
uh, put Akoben, A K O B E N. A A K A O B E N. Okay. Uh, it's an Akan word. It's a it's a horn, a special horn that the villagers blow uh -huh. for alertness, preparation, and mobilization. Okay. So if you go to that, you, it'll come up. And a lot of things come up. Uh, a lot of our uh, conversations, even I, one day I, I was doing a search on myself and our, the, the text, the transcript from the Bernays piece came up. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So like I said, if you go to a good, like DuckDuckGo or some of the yeah. other uh, open source or more free spirited um search engines a lot of things will come up right i found on on the you know on sort of the the more famous ones uh they're useless now they're just useless <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> they've been so but i mean they were always part they were funded by the cia proprietary right. um capitalist venture capitalists right. so right. you know what was going to happen right well, you know, it's funny, when we started the data servicing company in the 90s, I had somebody go off and research uh, how to, um, you know, sort of where the government was going to spend money on data servicing. You know, what was the future data servicing? And they came back with some huge estimate, billions and billions and billions uh, the government was going to spend on data servicing. And I said, well, really, what's the data they're going to collect? And he said, they're collecting data on all of us. And I thought, ooh, this is chilling. And then um, my chief financial officer came to me and said, well, you know, we need a personnel system. I said, I'm not, not spending money on that. And uh, so I said, what we're gonna do is every full-time employee who's a shareholder, we'll have them for the bonus process, we'll teach them HTML, we'll have them make an internet page for themselves and we'll link it together and that'll be our, our personnel, you know, We'll have everybody update their own file in the personnel system. So then when Facebook came along, I said, oh, I've seen this before. I know what this is. They don't want to spend a trillion dollars on data servicing. They'll just have us all yep. update our own personnel file. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very clever. Yeah, it was very, very ingenious. You, you make it hip, and then they sit back and watch you tell on yourself. Right. Give all your information, do all your, what you're doing, what's going on in your lives. And then they uh, filter it and rank it because even some of the more aggressive people were going using Facebook or use Twitter or the, and so that, and that's how they, they track people. Right. Okay. Well, Junius, before we shut down, any other thoughts or tips for people on, I mean, you tell us how you do it because you stay very sane. And I know you're navigating the cult just like the rest of us. Well, again, you, you have to find that core within yourself. Trust yourself. The bottom line is trust intuition. It's never wrong. Right. It may sound or seem crazy. Right. Uh, it's just like uh, for the people who are Christians, in the, the first miracle that Yeshua did, turning the wine, uh, the water to wine. Mm -hmm. And his mother told the steward, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Right. And that's my advice in terms of your intuition. Whatever it tells you to do. Now, you have to discern your true, into the still small voice, the sacred whisper, and differentiate that from the craziness that's being pumped into us all the time. But right. once you make that distinction, whatever it tells you to do, do it. Right. And you, you, you will come out, even when it puts you at odds with the rest of the world, you'll still be in good shape. Right. It means being introspective. It means trusting yourself as opposed to the outside world because they want us to be out, outer directed because that's how they manipulate us. Right. And so it right. sounds simple but it's a long-term process. You have to learn to trust that. Listen to that still small voice, what I call the sacred whisper. Sacred whisper? Oh, mm -hmm. I like that. Okay, well, Junius Ricardo Stanton, we've shared your sacred whisper. We appreciate it. I, I want you to come back more often on the Salary Report. Okay, we'll do, we'll do. And okay. I will use 
this as one of my podcasts because uh, if, if I have your permission. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. No, I mean the like I told you, couple I think it was a couple of weeks ago. The battle is not to the swift. The race is not to the swift. Nope, absolutely not. That's why you know I have one of my favorite pieces at Slay Report is called Turtling, because that's <laughs> what I say. We're just gonna, you know, we'll just turtle it. We'll just see what we can do. We'll just turtle it. So mm -hmm. yeah, and see the turtle has that protection, his own protection with right. you know, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, stay strong, stay safe, and keep on the track. I will. All you right. have a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much.